Hello, folks. I get asked all the time, how come I only do 3-minute exposures? Why don't you do 10-minute or 20-minute exposures? And my first answer is, well, I live too close to the airport. Uh, the planes, I'm in the arrival path of Detroit Metro Airport, and the planes are really low flying. It, it, it's bad over here. But I was still curious, and I just wanted to compare a three-minute image versus ten minutes, just for my own sake. I want to see how they stack up to each other. Okay, so on the left here, we have a three-minute image of the Sol Nebula. Let's take a look at that. That's one image at three minutes. You can see the Sol Nebula right here. Now let's look at the one on the right. This is my ten-minute image. And, of course, <laughs> like clockwork, there's the plane. That's the wing on that side. That's a wing, and th this is the main body. Now, this is a really high-flying plane because normally, let me show you. This is what uh, <laughs> this is what uh, the the plane normally looks like. There's the Sol Nebula, and look at how thick. Here's a wing. That's a wing, and this is the main body. Usually, I just get clipped by a wing, but in this case, when I was capturing the Sol Nebula. The, the plane was literally across the whole frame. I mean, that, that's unusual. Like I said, I usually just get clipped by a wing or something, but these lines are, are way too thick to average out. And, and that's what I would fear, throwing, having to throw away 10 minutes of data because of this. I'd rather just throw away a 3-minute image. Um, anyway, let's go back to that 10-minute image here. And as I would expect in the 10-minute image, I did pick up more nebulosity in one raw image, but I was really, we knew that, but I was really curious, how do my stars look compared to the three minute image? Are they, are they bloated? Uh, are they stretched? And let's compare. Here's the three minute image, and here's the 10 minute on the right, and to me, the stars look exactly the same. So I was really impressed. My guiding, the CGX mount, it didn't waver one bit over that 10 minutes. To, no difference at all, in, in my view, from what I can see, between uh, 3 minutes and 10 minutes for the stars. So that was nice to see. Okay, so am I missing out by not doing 10-minute exposures? On the left here, now I stack three of my 3-minute exposures, and neither of these has any calibration frames. But if you look, uh, so this is 9 minutes of data versus 10 minutes of data, and... It's it's very close. Now, I'm just eyeballing the data. Of course, I'm sure there's stats that can be run that can tell a better story, but I'm more of an eyeball kind of guy. And, and I don't think I'm missing much by sticking with shorter exposures. I, I think I'm going to be fine because this nine minutes of data with three-minute exposures, it, it holds up well. Uh, I don't know how well you can really see this in a video, in a video but I, I think it's okay. And, I think this just proves to myself I'm, I'm going to be just fine with my three-minute exposures. I, I'm just not going to risk 10-minute exposures in those airplanes. Okay. So uh, 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 let me show you one more thing. I want to give a shout-out to Trevor Jones. He runs the popular Astro Backyard website and YouTube channel. And he actually created a page here on his website, uh, choosing an astrophotography telescope. This is for beginners getting into this hobby. You know, what's a good starting scope for them? And he listed his top five. And one of my telescopes is in his list. And when he listed it, he sent me a message and asked if he could use my pictures as examples of what that telescope could do. That was really cool, you know, when you get a shout out from your peers and you can see he listed my rosette and heart nebula. I thought that was really nice. So thanks, Trevor. And uh, he linked to my Astrobin account. And let me show you one more thing since I'm in Astrobin. I wanted to reprocess my Cygnus wall. I, I just felt something wasn't quite right with it. So I, I reprocessed the data. And um, this is my original Cygnus wall. And which I thought, I mean, I think it's a great, I mean, I'm, I'm bragging now, but I think it's a really good image. And I, uh, already have a metal print on this one, but I didn't mean to say it's great. I don't want to call my stuff great. Let other people do that if, if I'm lucky enough for them to think that. Uh, but I gave it another shot, and I tried different colors, 
and I tried a different orientation. I really like this one. Uh, it just it, it just has so much pop in it, and I made it my screen background. I I, I love this one. Uh, uh, I and apparently. Astrobin dug it too because it only took four hours or so for them to put it into their top picks. So hope, see here's their top picks and here's my image. So hope is alive that I'm going to get an image of the day. One of these days and when I do, I'll stop yapping about it. I just want one. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.